Hello class, we're going to start this unit by learning about blood glucose homeostasis. This is one of the most important concepts you'll be learning because the regulation of blood glucose is important for energy and also for the understanding of type 1 and type 2 diabetes. Many of your patients will have diabetes, so it is really important for you to understand um, blood glucose regulation and how the disease is, um, comes about and also how to manage the disease. Okay, so we're gonna start this um, lesson by looking at what is the big picture of a blood glucose homeostasis, okay? So remember, we had talked about this um, before that glucose is essential for all cells of the body because glucose is important right here. You can see glucose right here with the presence of oxygen is essential for the production of ATP, okay? And with the production of ATP, and that gives the cells the fuel, the energy um, needed to do cell work, okay? So if the blood does not have sufficient amounts, if the blood surrounding the cell does not have sufficient glucose molecules, well, then not enough glucose is getting into the cell to do work. So without glucose around, then the cell will have low ATP, and with low ATP, the cells can shut down or um, the cells can die from the lack of ATP. The brain is particularly sensitive to the blood glucose changes because the brain cells require glucose to make ATP, okay? The brain cannot burn others like fat, so glucose is essential for brain to have the ATP to allow it for, for it to work. And also brain use a lot of energy to help control different parts of the body and then the neuronal processes um, control breathing and heart rate, which are also really critical function. Okay, so um, when you look at blood glucose, you want to maintain the homeostasis, okay? The normal blood homeostasis. So when the blood glucose goes below normal, then you have what's called hypoglycemic glucose mia blood. So hypoglucose in the blood. And then when the blood glucose goes above normal, it's called hyperglycemia. So both of which are not ideal. Um, so what we want is to maintain blood glucose in the homeostasis range. Okay, and this is controlled by we eat and our body regulate to make sure that the blood glucose stays in normal. And between meals, it also works to stay between normal. So let's jump ahead a little bit in this slide to see. So if you look at the normal blood glucose range here, the, the blood glucose will change and rise with each meal that you eat, but then the body's control system, the hormones will bring them back to homeostasis range. Then you'll stay in homeostasis range for a while until you eat again and the body brings it back to homeostasis range. And then the body will maintain the homeostasis range um, between meals. And then as you eat again, it'll do that again. So you have this normal blood homeostasis range, but it briefly changes with the meal, but the body's control system brings them right back to homeostasis. Okay, so you can go through this figure and the different steps um, on how this happens, okay, just as a big picture. Also, the food you eat has what's called a glycemic index. So the glycemic index refers to when you eat that food, how much does that food increase the blood glucose, okay? So you can watch a video on carbohydrate metabolism that explains how body digests the food. So depending on the food, for example, if you ate pumpkin, that's a low glycemic index food versus if you had something like ice cream, which is a high glycemic index food. So depending on the food that you put in your body, the control system that is required to bring the blood glucose back to homeostasis is going to be... Um, Different. So, for example, if you have ice cream, a large serving of ice cream, well, that your body has to release more control system to bring the blood glucose to normal versus eating something like vegetable. Okay. 
So again, go through each meal and you can see here, this person had a, for breakfast, had a high glycemic index food for breakfast requiring more control system. For lunch, they had a small lunch, so it doesn't require as much. And then for dinner, they had a much higher glycemic index dinner food. And then they seem to had a snack or dessert right after as well. Okay. So you can see that um, when you look at why glucose is needed and what kind of food and how does it change the blood glucose and how does the body regulate throughout the day, you can see that um, uh, the control system, what, what it needs to do to bring everything to homeostasis range so that you do have normal blood glucose. What normal blood glucose means is that it is the correct amount for cells to get energy, okay? but it's not too high to cause damage and it's not too low for the cells to be starved, okay? And to, the, the body system that controls for blood glucose is your pancreas. The, so the organ is pancreas, this whole yellow structure here. Within the pancreas, if you look closely on the tissue, we're looking at this little circular purple structure that is then called the pancreatic islet or the islets of Langerhans. Okay, and then the Isla Langerhans is this little region of cells. And when th this is the endocrine tissue. So within the endocrine tissue, what you have is alpha cells and beta cells. So they just named alpha and beta cells. So alpha cells makes the hormone glucagon. So this is a hormone, glucagon. So the A reminds you that it's the alpha cell. Okay, and this the function of glucagon is to increase blood glucose, okay? Of course, you need a, uh, to have homeostasis, you have to have the opposite action, which in, the, in this case, we have the beta cells, okay? And the beta cells make insulin, that's a hormone, so the insulin is made by beta cells, okay? The rest of the cell outside of the islet of Langerhans or the pancreatic islet is what's called exocrine, okay? So this is not an endocrine, no endocrine function, okay? They make enzyme for digestion of food. So I'm going to take a minute to practice uh, identify this pancreas and really think about the two cells working to help you keep the blood glucose normal when you eat and in between meals, when you eat and in between meals. So this is the intro to the blood glucose regulation and we will now next video will explain what happens after you eat a meal and then also um, when you have hyperglycemia, okay? So um, you can watch the next video, take notes on this journal and then watch the next video on high after you eat.